So, just like I often do, um, as I was explaining to you how the Oompa Loompas load, uh, you put two in here, and then you put two in here, and then you uh, start filling up the various levels, and we said that you kind of fill up one floor, and then you fill up the next floor, and then you fill up the next floor, and then you fill up the next floor, but, as always, I was lying, because you couldn't handle the truth, okay? So, rather than load you down with a bunch of stuff you weren't going to be able to process, I just kind of said it that way at the beginning. And we said, oh, this completely fills, then this completely fills, then this completely fills, and then this completely... And that's not exactly how it works. It's actually a little bit more complicated than that. Actually, you fill up the 1S, then the 2S, then the 2P, then the 3S, then the 3P, then the 4S, then the 3D, then the 4P, and whatever, and it gets kind of complicated after that. But I didn't... Uh, the reason I didn't go in order was because that is actually not... When you do the uh, energy calculations using the Schrodinger equation, um, we learned the alpha principle. We said that they don't want to spend more money than they have to, but what that means is that they're not going to be in a higher energy uh, state than they have to be. And so what we really want to know is which are the lowest energies. And it turns out that 4S is actually a lower energy than 3D, and therefore 4S is going to fill first. And so memorizing what the order is is kind of hard so we don't do it. Instead what we do is we use what's called the diagonal rule. So the diagonal rule shows what order the sublevels are going to fill up in. Oh, I dangled a preposition. For those of you who are in the class, you know why I dangled a preposition. I wouldn't normally do that. It's because my head headset fell off. So, <coughs> um, so what is the diagonal rule, how does it work, and how is it going to help us to figure out what uh, is going to happen? So here's uh, how you make a diagonal rule. You've got to be able to make one of these uh, on a test or something. You're going to want to make one and then use it to answer questions. Uh, here's how you do it. You start out by writing uh, the name of each sublevel. For instance, you start with 1S, and then below that, the next sublevel would be 2S, and then 2P, and then the next level down would have 3s, 3p, and 3d is correct. And then the fourth level, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, 5s, 5p. We keep going all day. 5d, 5f. And then what would you write? What would you write over here? No, it's still on the fifth level. What would I'll come. We would write G, that's right. Now, G doesn't actually uh, usually uh, exist in nature because nothing gets that high energy, but we can leave it there as a space filler. Now, this is called the what rule? The diagonal rule. So we need some diagonals here in order to make the rule's name make sense. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start at the top right corner of the 1S, and we're going to draw an arrow down and to the left. And then we're going to uh, do the same thing in parallel fashion there. And then always starting at the right top right corner, drawing parallel lines right through. You see how we're doing those? Diagonal. You follow them diagonal. You don't see what we're doing? No? It's diagonal lines from the top right corner to the bottom left. And now uh, we have a problem with this line. What's the problem with that line? Do you notice why that one has a problem? It doesn't, it doesn't go through anything down here, does it? And that's a problem. So uh, if I'm going to draw a line, it's got to go through something. So that would be the 6S that would be in that spot, right? So if you draw a line that doesn't go through anything, add that sublevel there. That's right. I'd need to go, you know, to make my next one, I'm going to have to uh, add a whole bunch more stuff. But I don't probably, I don't think I'm going to need to. So what, what did we just do? Well, if you follow those arrows, that is the order the sublevels fill in. That is the order that they fill in. So it's not just, uh, for instance, you see you don't fill the whole fourth floor up. Woo! What you do is you fill up uh, the, f so 1S, then 2S, and then 2P. What? Question. Could there be a 4G? No, there could not be a 4G. There could not be a 3F either. 0S? Uh, there, 
uh, you can't have a zero with the floor. They they start at one. It's like there's not a so the first floor is number one. So there's no such thing as a zero. So if you go one s, just follow follow the lines here. You'll see that the uh, you go one s and then two s and then two p and then three s. And then you always go back up here, then 3P, then 4S, then 3D, then 4P, then 5S, then 4D, then 5P, then 6S. And then if we kept going, it would be 4F, and then 5D, and then 6P, and then 7S. And so you could keep going as far, far down as you wanted. But that's the diagonal rule. And so how do we apply this? What, how, let's actually do something. So. Um, what we're going to do next is we're actually going to do, uh, it's one of the vocab words, it's an orbital box diagram. We're going to do an orbital box diagram. And we're going to do it for bromine. So let's find, uh, get out a periodic table or check the one in the back of your book and look for bromine. And what I want you to do is I want you to tell me what is its atomic number. It's number 35. What does 35 mean? What is, an, what is an atomic number? It tells you how many what they have. Protons. 35 protons. Now, is an orbital box diagram telling you about protons? What is it telling you about? It's telling you about electrons. So what we want to know is how many electrons this guy will have. Well, how many electrons will it have? It's going to have 35 because we're dealing with a neutral atom, so the protons and the electrons need to be the same. So we're going to have 35 electrons. So anytime you do one of these, and it's not for an ion, it's just for a regular old atom, uh, the number of protons is going to equal the number of electrons. That's how many we have to draw. So <coughs> if we get our uh, whole, uh, I just kind of pasted that whole thing in there. We have 35 electrons to place. and here is our uh, atom. We're going to put it into the we've got 1s, 2s, etc. Where are the first two electrons going to go? In the 1s. And so uh, I'm going to use uh, crisscrosses for spin up and down. We, we could uh, could use arrows, but taking putting on all those arrowheads takes a long time. So I'll just use the crisscross. So 1s. Now, according to your, I'm not going to go back to. Well, maybe I am. What uh, if we go back to the uh, orbital or the diagonal rule? What comes after 1s? 2s. Now I'm going to stop flipping back up and down. You have to follow along on your paper. 2s. After 2s, 2p. That's here. Now remember Hund's rule. We're going to go one at a time, and then double up, double up, double up. Am I up to 35 electrons yet? I'm not up to 35 yet. So. Right, you can fit two in each. So what comes after 2p according to your diagonal rule? 3s. One there, one there. What's after 3s? 3p. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then 3d next? No, it is not 3d. If you look at your diagonal rule, follow the arrows after 3p comes 4s, doesn't it? So we're going to skip the 3ds for now jump up to 4s and fill that guy. Now we've got 4s. What's after 4s? Is it? Look at your diagonal rule. Did you write it down? What's after uh, 4s? 3d. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, now I should probably stop and do some counting, right? I might, I might already be above 35, in which case I've done too much work. How many have I used? How many electrons have homes now? 30, we've got 30, and we need 35. So how many more do we need? We need five more. Now, where are they going to live? What comes after 3D on your diagonal rule? 4P comes next. So we're going to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're done. And we're going to stop. We're not going to do anything more. Because the diagonal rule said that uh, that 3D was actually cheaper than 4P, so it was gonna they were gonna live in that space bef before they paid the high rent up here. So you always got to refer to that. All, don't just blindly build up on here. You're going to look at the diagonal rule. You're gonna look at that those arrows and follow those. So that, my friends, is an orbital box diagram. 
I usually just say the words orbital diagram for uh, for bromine. Now a couple more things before we leave this and do uh, electron configurations. First, I would like to point out a distinction. These electrons are what we refer to as the inner core electrons. That's a vocab word. But these at the top are not inner core electrons. They have their own special word. The word for that is valence. Those are valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons in the highest energy level. Valence electrons are the electrons in the highest energy level. So how many valence electrons does bromine have? In other words, go to the top floor, count electrons, how many are there? Seven, that's right. Seven valence electrons. And uh, that's going to be really important as we go through things because, as we'll see, most of the chemistry of atoms and whether they bond, whether they don't bond, whether they react, how they react, those are, that's really driven by valence configuration. And so that <coughs> is... Uh, that's something we're going to spend a lot of time dealing with. So there is uh, the diagonal rule and how to do an orbital diagram. Next we're going to do electron configurations.